From crunch econometrics, I'll be explaining summary or descriptive statistics in e-views. Before engaging any regression analysis, it is essential that you have a feel of your data set, that is, what information is contained in your sample. Summary statistics is relevant for parametric or non-parametric tests. It is essential for both qualitative or quantitative research. It can easily tell you whether your sample is normally distributed and whether there are outliers in the data. Other information that you can obtain will be information on measures of central tendency, knowing the values for the mean, the median, and the mode. Information on measures of dispersion, what will be the range of the series, the variance, the standard deviation, percentiles, quartiles, or deciles, as the case may be. What about measures of normality? You need to know more about the ketosis or the skewness of the variables. It is important for you to use the raw data of the variable and not the transformed data. So don't use the log transformation or the first difference of a series if you want to run summary statistics. Now, on measures of central tendency, the mean is simply the average value of that particular variable. The median in this case will be the middle value after you have sorted from the highest to the lowest or vice versa, while the mode will be the most appeared value for that particular variable. On the measures of dispersion, you need to know how spread out your data is, looking at the range, which is the difference between the highest and the lowest value. The variance tells you how widely dispersed the observations are for this particular variable, while the standard deviation tells you how far the observations are from the sample average. Again, use the raw data of the variable and not the transformed data. On measures of normality, we are only considering two. That is the kurtosis and skewness. The kurtosis tells us about the peakness or flatness of the distribution of the series. So if we say a distribution is mesocortic, it simply means it embodies a normal distribution with a ketosis value of 3. If it's leptocortic, it means it has a positive ketosis. It is a pit curve indicating that there are more higher values than the sample mean for this variable. And being platycotic implies that it has a negative ketosis. It is a flatted curve with more lower values than the sample mean. Now, on the skewness, this measures the degree of asymmetry of the series. Normal skewness implies that the distribution is symmetric around the mean and the skewness value is zero. For positive skewness, it implies that this distribution will have a long right tail, meaning there are higher values than the sample mean. While negative skewness implies that this distribution will have a long left tail with more lower values than the sample mean. So having given you all this preamble, let us now maneuver to e-views to take on an example. E-views is up. I'll be using this grouped data. You can see in their raw forms, I have MVA, GDP growth rate, and the real exchange rate from 1981 to 2014. So I have 34 observations for each of the variables. So these are the raw forms of this data. They are not in their log transformation. So to run summary statistics, all I need to do is to click on view, descriptive statistics, then click on individual samples. So this is the result for the summary statistics. I have here the mean, the median, the maximum, minimum values, I have the standard deviation, skewness, courtesies. I also have the Jacobera and a probability value for the Jacobera statistics. I have moved the table here to the screen because I have other information that I need to talk about. Now, the main value here simply tells us the average value for each of the variables. So for MVA is 6, for GDP growth rate is 3.7, while for the real exchange rate is 155.17. The median simply tells us the middle values for each of these three variables, while the maximum and the minimum values tells us the highest and the lowest figures in each of these variables. The standard deviation tells us the deviation from the sample mean with respect to each of the variables. 
The, what I want to talk about here will be the skewness. For normal skewness, the value is zero. So we can say that um, this variable MVA mirrors a normal distribution. Let's look at the ketosis value of 1.88. Ketosis measures the peakness or flatness of the distribution of a series. And with a ketosis value of 1.88, which is clearly lower than the value of 3, because a value of 3 implies that the distribution is normal, is mesocortic. But with 1.88, we can say that MVA, although mirrors a normal distribution, is clearly platycortic. And platycortic implies that this series will have lower values below its sample mean. It's going to have a lot of values that are lower than 6.0. That is what this platycortic implies. So it's going to have a, a flat surface. To GDP growth rate. The GDP growth rate, the skewness value is 1.15. And like we can see, being 1.15, GDP growth rate distribution will have a long right tail. It embodies positive skewness and is clearly leptocortic, looking at the ketosis value of 8.33. This is a peaked distribution. For the real exchange rate, it takes a similar interpretation with that of GDP growth rate. The skewness value is 1.67. It will have a long right tail, indicating it's positively skewed. And the ketosis value of 4.83 also indicates that it's leptocortic. Now, let's take a look at the Jacobera statistic. The Jacobera statistic measures the difference between the skewness and the ketosis of each of these variables with those from a normally distributed um, variable. So we can see here that the Jacobera statistic for NVA is 2.05, that of GDP growth rate is 47.8, and real exchange rate is 20.5. And below them are their respective probability values. The null hypothesis for the Jacobera uh, test is that the distribution is normal. So we can see that for NVA, the, the, the probability value is 0 0.35, which is above the significance level of 0 0.05. So with respect to NVA, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So we can say that NVA is a normally distributed curve. It has a normal distribution. But we cannot say the same for GDP growth rates and real exchange rates. In both situations, we clearly reject the null hypothesis of a normal distribution because the probability value are highly statistically significant. So again, for GDP growth rates and the real exchange rates, the distributions are clearly not normal. And this answer can be clearly seen even from the result of the ketosis and the skewness of these two variables. So given this, we can say that uh, before you run your analysis, it is essential that you have a good idea of the summary statistics of the data you'll be working with. You can easily see whether there is an outlier in the data. For instance, for GDP growth rate, the maximum value of 33.73 may likely indicate an outlier because it's different from every other observation in the data. And that could be the reason why the curve is so peaked at 8.33. So you might want to take a look at your gen data generating process to see whether there is an imputation error or something. So again, having descriptive statistics is important before you start running any regression analysis. In case I am too fast, please play back this video so that you can get more understanding on what we have discussed. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics. Visit our website and our blog and stay tuned for more tutorials.